I'm saying me first, then my family, then my business. And we never actually say that to ourselves. We, especially like, you know, I, I cannot speak for women as much as men because I can, you know, I'm a father. I, I'm responsible for a lot of things um, in my household. I'm, I'm the sole provider in my household. Yeah. Probably there's a lot of women out there that are, are as well. But I'm just saying like as a man, sole provider, I am expected, like people expect a lot of me. And I expect a lot for myself. And I, you know, sometimes we take things too hard. Sometimes we, um, we never get that pat in the back. Sometimes we just don't take care of ourselves, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like we need to be able to take care of ourselves um, and put ourselves first, our physical and mental fitness first above our family. Because if you don't have our physical and mental fitness, we don't have our family. Hey, this is a quick shout out from one of our awesome sponsors. Check this out. There's no doubt everyone loves true crime podcasts these days. And there's a new podcast that you will want to add to your playlist. Murder Mondays. Host Nicole Simmons travels and interviews victims and families of murderers in South Carolina. She's a small town girl who's a wife and business owner. And Murder Mondays is a passion project for her. She brings you the facts and personal stories of the people affected by the most heinous crimes in South Carolina. If you enjoy true crime podcast, Murder Mondays is for you. Murder Mondays with your host, Nicole Cole Simmons, available on Anchor, Apple Podcast, Spotify, and other podcast players. Add Murder Mondays with Nicole Simmons to your playlist right now. Uh, Saki, you're a husband, dad, veteran speaker. You're a coach, entrepreneur, podcaster. You're also a content creator who helps entrepreneurs become the CEOs of their lives and create the right kind of impact on the world. First of all, thank you for your service and thank you for your time, man. I appreciate you. Dude, it's an honor to be on the show. Uh, I like to go back to kick things off with my show. Like, where did you grow up? What was childhood like for you? Oh, growing up. Uh, well, I'm from Israel and uh, and I grew up here in Israel. Okay. So basically just, you know, regular, nothing special, like in my upbringing, um, kind of like a middle to high class family, I guess. Um never had anything missing on the other hand i never really learned to um to manage money actually i came from a family that didn't manage money the proper way okay. and i was never taught anything about financial education so um that's one thing second thing is um it, here in israel it's like nobody really thinks about business um, right. until they're like 20 28 20 whatever like it's like okay. We got this thing where most people, right, they go to the high school and then they go to the army and then they get out the army. They want to have a big trip. They don't even think about starting a business and sure. uh, come back from the big trip, go to university, um, you know, finish university and then they're like, okay, now what? Um, and so that happens for us, maybe in the United States, it happens at about like age 21, 22. Okay. Um, here for us, it happens at about age 25 to 28. So um a lot later in life and then um yeah so that's pretty much it <laughs> i got you i got you so always a fun question i was like when you were a kid though what did you want to be when you grew up oh man um i don't even man i don't remember um i just have one flashback to when i was a kid about eight year old yeah uh, so first of all until i was 12 i was going to be a ninja and that was for sure Dude, that's the best, that's the best occupation in the world, man. <laughs> yeah, man, definitely. I was the same um, way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, that that's for sure. Um, but I also I remember a flashback to uh where I was writing. We used to write to my grandmother at least once a week, and she was like in the city about like 30 minutes drive. And I remember we used to sit in the car um and just like look at the roads. And I was remember imagining myself coming here to this world for a higher purpose and serving others and changing their lives and i don't know why it even like you know <laughs> came to me back then but i was only reminded of that when i was like 20 years old it's something i was like wait i did think of that when i was eight years old so mm -hmm. trying to connect back that. to that yeah. Yeah. yeah oh man that's so cool now you're a veteran like i mentioned was that by choice or do you guys have a draft over there that you had to go in there and then what did you learn from that experience that you use today um, and um, I just released, by the way, a post on my Instagram today just about this. Uh, so many feelings are coming up uh, because we just, uh, there was Independence Day here okay. in Israel. And in Israel, um, Independence Day comes straight after Mem uh, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're kind of like, you know, we, we say, 
Um, thank you for the soldiers who, who gave their lives and sacrificed their lives in order to uh, create this country. And then we celebrate a day later, you know, for, for the independence that we have. Yeah. And, um, and I was, yeah, I'm a veteran. And, um, we have to serve here in Israel uh, for three years as, okay. as like men serve three years um, and ladies, they serve two years. Uh, we get drafted when we were 18 years old. It's, it's a law. You have to be drafted. Although a lot of people do uh, manage to, to, to get out. Um, it's not so hard uh, yeah. if you don't want to serve. Um, so people manage to really get out. And also, you don't have to be a fighter. Um, but I went to be a fighter, and um, it, was, it was a great experience, I think. Um, definitely learned a ton. From, yeah. you know, when you're out there and you're facing the reality especially like I knew I was in the Middle East. I knew the whole world was talking about, you know, everything that's going on over here. Yeah. Um, I, I know my history. Like I know my, my people's history. Like we, like we almost got, you know, completely massacred, like, you know, in the Holocaust. And then we came here, so many wars that have been going on. Um, Yom Kippur War, we got attacked from all sides, almost like by all the nations that just want to kill us and ally us. And, and we won. And mm. so, but we still keep this, like, we still know that there's around us, everybody wants to kind of kill us. So we yeah. kind of, I, being that in that situation, and, um, and I was in the, like, I was serving in the, um, in the West Bank, um, and, you know, near Jerusalem area, but like in the occupied territories. Um, and I remember just like being in that middle of that conflict. And I think that really grounded me. Like it gave me perspective because I met a lot of amazing people, like from both sides. And I met a lot of really bad, evil people, like greedy, evil, um, hate, hatred. Um, I, I saw that with my own eyes. Well, experienced that with even like, you know, with violence thrown at me. So, yeah. um, and had to kind of like stand up against it when I needed to. But then a minute later, I had to stop and see that, you know, whatever poor lady that wants to cross the check post and had to serve her, you know, or something. So you really have to kind of balance. And when you do that kind of balance and you get out the arm, you're like, man, you've been through so much already um, that by the time you're out, you're like, you, you, you've been through a lot, but you don't even connect it. It's like, you know, kind of like try to um, forget about that experience. And, sure. and um I don't know why I actually it took me years to to kind of like go through that and then right now when I'm an entrepreneur and a complete like a business person I you know I'm so grateful for that experience and, and I, I learned I, I just lessons keep popping up and, and it's just amazing mm, I love it man and it's so interesting that you were talking about you know all the wars that happened and where you're at in you know in, in Jerusalem there I'm actually right now I'm, I'm studying the book of Joshua right now with a bunch of buddies man and then we're just talking <laughs> yes. about like so much wars and violence going on right there in that area man in that <laughs> yeah. book and I'm like oh dude it's so like it's trippy man I totally forgot that I was having that conversation yeah. with you today man so yeah. funny uh, I mean you and I, we have a similar love for mindset, man. And you recently put mm -hmm. out a video on five books that will empower you through hard times. I love that video, by the way. People need to go check that out. Thank you. Thank um, you, brother. Of those five, which one is your favorite and why? Wow. Um, so I think it's not so hard to say that one of my favorite books is David Goggins' Can't Hurt Me. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, it's, a, it's, it's also one of the best books ever served as an audiobook. Um, so if people, you know, if you guys listen, listen to the show, you know, you have audiobooks, like you love podcasts here. So go and check out the audiobook of Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, because it features kind of like interviews in between chapters with David Goggins and the guy who kind of like um, helped him write the book. Um, and it's just, it gives so much um, inspiration and, and tools. By the way, his, uh, his thing about the cookie jar, it's something that I took with me. Like, it's just, it's a thing, right? You, yeah. um, so for, for those who don't know, cookie jar is a concept where whenever you're feeling like you're out of wind and you just can't take it anymore and it's like things are too hard for you to bear, think about all you achieved. That's the cookie jar. So have a cookie jar, prepare it, you know, for dark times. And in that cookie jar, have everything that you achieved and everything you're grateful for. And whenever you're in dark times, just open the cookie jar and pick one cookie, take it out, look at it, inspect it and see, wow, 
this is an amazing achievement I had. Put it back. Take another one. And so that that's kind of like a great mindset tool for you to get through like hard times. And and there's a lot of great things in those books, but like that's one of my favorites. Oh, I love it, man. So good. You know, and, and as entrepreneurs, as entrepreneurs, we all experience failures and, and you've had your fair share of it as well. Even at one point, I think yeah. you were like fifty thousand dollars in debt, man. Like trying to figure yeah. out that. Like when you experience failure though, what is your mindset? How do you overcome that failure, man? Man, um, so you know, it's it's funny that we're talking about this now because that was like um five years ago. Um, that's like my origin story, if you will. Yeah. Um, so and and for anybody who doesn't know the full story, I'll try to make it short as possible, but basically <laughs> like I, <laughs> it's it's almost awesome. impossible. But you know, I was I was um I tr- I tried to open my business. I was uh, a designer most of my career, a uh, pretty successful one, built a great career for myself, also had a startup, it got acquired by similar web, another big startup, and I was like the, the design director in that uh, big startup scaling to like 400 people in the company. And like I was like in with a great career, but I left it in order to work on a blog full time back then. Okay. Um, and um, and then that's where things, you know, turned sideways. You you leave as an entrepreneur. You, I left my day job, um, in order like with the dreams of like you know making passive income, making yeah. a lot of money, right? As an entrepreneur, <laughs> spending time with my family and my wife and everything, and like um. And obviously it didn't go that way. Uh, I, I didn't manage my money properly. I, I, um, I, didn't, I didn't have a vision. She said, I don't know how many entrepreneurs out there just don't have a vision. Or, you know, and when you start thinking you need a vision, you understand most of, most of you out there lack clarity of yes. what you actually want to do. Totally. I think clarity is one of the most important things, right? So that's a process to get to clarity. Basically, like I had none of that. And my partner and I, we split kind of like in different directions, each pulled in different directions um until uh we couldn't monetize i was dead broke um i my my partner was off was pretty good off because he saved i didn't save so i and i was already a father of two and i had a mortgage and everything so i took a loan i wasted that loan um on my regular expenses over three yeah. months and that's where i found myself in 50k debt um not able not being able to monetize not knowing like in two weeks you know another debit card payments coming off and i didn't even know where i'm you know where i'm going to be then hey this is a quick shout out from one of our awesome sponsors check this out hey guys this episode is sponsored by tranquil turtle massage tracy over there the founder she's a small town girl from montana loves god loves her family loves her friends loves working out fishing and camping she has a passion for helping those in need and enjoys being creative with woodworking crocheting healthy baking pottery and cooking look she began her massage journey back in 2010 where she graduated from massage school up in anchorage alaska she specializes in her signature massages the hanu infusion and the hanu ashiatsu as well as the gua sha and manual lymphatic drainage if you're looking for a massage specialist and someone who could get you feeling good go see tracy down at tranquil turtle massage and while you're there, check out CDA Microblading, offering Coeur d'Alene's best tattoo brows, plasma fibroblast, tightening, and PMU services right there in the heart of downtown Coeur d'Alene. Make sure you book your appointment at pnwmobilemassage.com. That's the part where I, you know, that that was the first time I cried as an adult, like really like broke down, cried. At, but I remember that's one thing, like a higher kind of thing or, um, or higher voice you know, it came to me when I was crying and it was like, it's like, it's great. You're crying, but what are you going to do about it? Right. And, and when I kind of heard that, I go, Hmm, it was like, kind of like me talking to myself, but it was kind of like a different voice. I don't know how to explain it, but, and then it was like, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta do something about it. I'm going to do something about it. I'm not just going to sit here and cry. And so, um, and then um, that's why I reached out to a couple entrepreneurs uh, one of them I hired as a coach flew in from the United States and he helped me create my vision for the first time ever. So I can say like one thing is like when you're in um, adversity as an entrepreneur, check out your vision. But what is a vision? That's also a good question, right? So um, I would say, first of all, check your values. Check yourself, right? Yeah. Look in the mirror. What do I value in life? And when you put that, I hope you guys value. Um, so here's here's the thing also, like, People get this wrong as well, I think. Um, and it's not that I'm implying and um, how, how people should um, or prioritize their values. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I think most of us are parents here, like listening to the show, maybe like right um, uh, parents. 
entrepreneurs. So we do care about starting a business. We do care about being the best uh, uh, dads or, or if there's women like mothers, like we care about being great parents and great partners to our spouses. Yeah. So um, we also, so uh, we also forget one major thing. We need to care about our health, right? So it's like our physical and mental fitness. And where does that come in the picture? By the way, I changed that in my own mind from physical and mental health to physical and mental fitness. I think mental fitness is a thing. And not many entrepreneurs actually, you know, are, are even taking time for themselves to, you know, to work on that. And when I'm looking at everything that I kind of like, after I built the business and everything, I had a couple more failures, obviously, as an entrepreneur, you have that, right? But, but, yeah. but I got through them with, um, with the right kind of taking care of myself, like mentally and physically. But um, and the, at the last time I had a very tough time in my business, it was about uh, beginning of 2021, started off really, really wrong, sideways, completely sideways, a client that went bad, um and, and then a lawsuit i was i was sued by a troll like you know one of the guys that are just you know the, he got on my email list sued me for um you know for about 10 grand um and for obviously he, he got legally on my email it's like meaning like he signed off uh he signed up when he asked to leave i took him off the list like everything's legit in that way i sure. didn't send spam nothing like that um but again you know he played on the small details in the law uh, yep. I took him to court to to battle him in court and not close the, the deal. But it was such a like I never got sued. I never visited court. I never talked to lawyers. Right. And so having three months in like creating um, a defense letter and um, and you know and and going to court and say and and people say are you the guys in you know charged? And I'm like yes, that's me. Like I'm and and like um, and that's completely like really bad situation to be in and also another client that I, I never have have clients that are gone bad like I really treat my clients well but mm -hmm. that specific client was kind of um it just didn't go well really I I messed things up on my end and I felt so guilty about it um and um and then that was just really bad timing as long as I with the lawsuit so I was like in a lot of stress uh angry emails from my client every day at about 10 p.m um and a new baby in the house my third kid was wow. born like i was new baby in the house i was not sleeping wife or oh, completely like you know um also not sleeping so she's mad all the time you know um and and so we were just it was mayhem and um and i remember what i fell back on in order to save myself is personal development things i learned workouts and uh mindfulness like uh meditation and those things saved me i think they saved me from like actual like physical illness, like um, in that sense. And um, I remember also putting like a screen saver on my phone saying like, it's all happening perfectly. Just, you know, remembering like there's, there's a purpose in this. Mm -hmm. And everything that I learned, I, you know, put into action and I got out that state three months. It took three months, but I, you know, I finished everything, was mm -hmm. done with the client, fixed everything for him. So he was so happy. I, I got out this lawsuit and uh, within the best possible scenario, um and um i remember just like sitting there after that like reassessing reflecting and saying wait what 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 happened <laughs> you know and um two things happened one i understood something i manifested this whole situation why because of something i was stuck in my mind i heard um basically i love jim Rohn. do you know jim Rohn? oh i love jim Rohn, right, man right. that guy's awesome. amazing right yeah yeah and um, I remember I heard a talk by Jim Rohn about like a year before that. And he was saying, uh, business has come in seasons, life comes in seasons. So right now, when you're in the summer, think winter. When you're in the winter, think summer. Now, just know winter will come. And I'm like, shit, winter is coming. And I <laughs> yeah. thought that, you know, in the, in the, especially in the month leading to 2021. And there yeah. we go. Winter happened. I manifested that shit. Sorry mm. for the language. So no, that's all good. It, I think we manifest what we, you know, exactly every day, I, you know, and I understood manifestation, but I didn't catch it that that's just what I manifested this period of my life. And so that's one thing I, I understood, like manifestation, and I'm never, ever, ever going to think of winter again. Right. You know, and F Jim Rohn for saying that. I'm just <laughs> saying, like, really, like, every, you know, everything people say in talks can be taken sideways so bad. 
And I'm just like, no, I'm not going to listen to any guru ever again saying anything that I just doesn't align with me, like manifesting the life of my dreams. So that's one. Mm. Two, um, I checked myself in the mirror. And I was like, okay, Sagi, what's going on in life right now? Um, what do you value? And then I'm like, I know better than to, va- like, I, we, we tend to say we're family first entrepreneurs a lot of the times, right? Yeah. We're family first. We're like totally. proud of that. Like yeah. my family on top of everything, my business <laughs> would collapse and my family would, you know, I'd be still be the best dad. I don't, I don't care. Like, so we take pride in that. But here's the thing. If we don't value, like we say family first, what about me first? Me mm. first, right? So I'm saying me first, then my family, then my business. And we never actually say that to ourselves. We, especially like, you know, I, I cannot speak for women as much as men because I can, you know, I'm a father. I, I'm responsible for a lot of things um, in my household. I'm, I'm the sole provider in my household. Yeah. Probably there's a lot of women out there that are, are as well. But I'm just saying like as a man, sole provider, I am expected, like people expect a lot of me. And I expect a lot for myself. And I, you know, sometimes we take things too hard. Sometimes we, um, we never get that pat in the back. Sometimes we just don't take care of ourselves, right? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like we need to be able to take care of ourselves um, and put ourselves first, our physical and mental fitness first above our family. Because if we don't have our physical and mental fitness, we don't have our family. We will fall ill. And we will, you know, we'll fall ill and we will not be able to serve our family and we'll not be able to serve our clients and our business. So that's exactly what, you know, what, what I said to myself was like, wow. Like, so I know that I know I should put myself first now. And then I checked my calendar and the funny thing happened because I know our calendar reflects our values. 100%. Yeah, totally. Right? Absolutely. <laughs> so like I was checking my calendar, like where does mental and physical fitness fall in my calendar? And I saw nothing. Because mm-hmm. I took the only spare time I had whenever I had spare time or felt that I had the spare time to do it. It just didn't work. So yeah. right then and there, and that was like, again, March or March or April, like uh, 2021, I marked my calendar from 9 a.m. to 12 noon every single day. No work. It's me time. Come that's on. my morning routine. Yeah. And um, ever since then, that's what I've been doing. Um, and it's just amazing. Um, you know, that's the space for me to work out, to meditate, uh, to s- sometimes spend time with my wife. We go to the breakfast or something. Sure. Um, and uh, that's the time for me to spend time also with some friends, maybe that I don't prioritize, you know, meeting because we're, we have such busy lives. Uh, it's time to meet with like potential people that are, you know, might be even business opportunities that would never even come to you because you're so busy with your own agenda. Yeah. So basically nine to 12 are my free time, first of all, for me, and then for others that I care about. Um, and, um, and that's, that's amazing. It works well. Mm, I love that, man. I, I want to talk about your, your podcast It's called commit first, man. Like, why did you start this thing? How did you come up with that name? Cause I love the name there. And then what's the show about <laughs> for those who don't know, man. I think so. Um, yeah. So that show is about, uh, Basically, entrepreneurship and the mindset part of entrepreneurship, I think it's about the, um, you know, a lot of people talk about business strategies and the tactics that you need in order to be successful in business. I think it's more about the mindset and the work on the innerverse. A lot of people talking about the metaverse out there. I'm talking about the innerverse. Yeah. So that's why yeah. I think like everything that is the work that we have to do, and I'm specifically, again, a man, a father, an entrepreneur. So um, I talk a lot to father entrepreneurs um, about, you know, what should we do? Because, you know, as fathers, we have so many um, setbacks, um, totally. right? I mean, man, like even today, today was hectic. I, we celebrated my son's birthday. So um, it was kind of like, it was a, there was a celebration and, you know, up leading to the celebration was a very short day at work. So I took as many meetings as I could and I <laughs> quickly, you know, quickly went to, um, I did my nine to 12 though. Right. So I didn't yeah. have a lot of time for meetings. So then I, I took as many meetings as I can from 12, picked up the kids from, from uh, schools and everything to, to make sure to prepare them. Uh, you know, my wife was working on the cake. Every, so stressful until you get to the, to the event. And then when you come back from the event, it's already late. Uh, getting the kids ready and they're already tired. So, you know, and you're like, or all around so many things and not your business. And then um, I had 
this interview, which I had to ask you to, if we could delay in like two hours, right? And then another client call, which I asked him to delay in like two hours. Um, and um, and like now it's 11 p.m. and here we go. Like, you know, I'm on Zoom, right? Like not <laughs> making up for stuff. But the one hour I had to fix me something to eat and eat it, um, and maybe we watch some Netflix just to chill for a second with my wife. Yeah. And that one hour, it took me 20 minutes to make the food, sit down with my wife. And what happened? The baby started crying like crazy. Right. So we 40 minutes, we were dealing with a crying baby me leading up to my client call. So it was kind of like, you know, we are dealing with so many setbacks and um, we have so many obstacles to tackle, especially in our mindset. Yeah. You know, because uh, if we stop for a second, my God, like, Sagi, what are you whining up? You have like three beautiful kids, you know, like I, beautiful life is so fun. Man, I'm, I'm so blessed to be talking to you right now. Mm. Um, you know, I'm just really feeling, really feeling grateful. But, you know, and, but as entrepreneurs, we tend to forget that sometimes um, we have a lot of obstacles. We want to get a lot of shit done. But then, you know, the kids are sick or we have like doctor appointments. So basically, like. This is there's a lot of mindset issues and processes to go through and to work on our own character in order to be successful and attract the things in the outer world that we want in order to live our life. And there's also the whole um, strategy behind building a vision and, and you know, respecting yeah. our values. And and so all this is what I talk about on Commit First. And actually, here's the um, here's the thing that I, I don't think we ever discussed before, though. Um, I'm actually building technology around it right now. So first step is coming out in a month. Uh, probably by the time this episode is out, the, the app will be out. Hopefully, I'm just saying hopefully because there's a development team working on it. So guys, don't, <laughs> don't take me up on the word exactly. But yeah, um, and and there's another big app. And um, um, the thing, the reason I I'm creating technology is because I came from the startup world. So right now I'm creating apps that are matching um, and and that can help my audience. And that that way I can make it more scalable and changing lives. Nice. Come on, man. I think it's awesome. And I think what you're doing with uh, your show and the way that you talk about dads and, and really wanted to help them become the CEOs of their live, man, you are an absolute world changer, bro. And it's such an honor to have you on my show. It's an honor to call you friend, man. And I just thank you so much for your time, man. Bro, thank you here. again, man. Thank you. Thank you. Eric. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to take a listen or a watch. It's truly an honor to be able to speak with such amazing guests. And I hope that they've made an impact on your life in some way, shape, or form. And you can do me one big favor. That would be huge. Click that subscribe button. And then second favor, hit that share button. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate you. Keep changing the world. I believe in you.